Sorry, I'm uh, just finishing some poetry. Uh, <laughs> so I'm supposed to, uh, I write poetry when I'm nervous, and uh, I'm a little bit nervous now because, uh, for one, I've never performed in front of a, a seal wearing a bow tie before. <laughs> <laughs> And he just looks like he's mocking me. <laughs> so I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, but uh, so I, I've been traveling around America and stuff, and Canada, and doing some gigs. And uh, I asked my friend and said, you know, I'm doing I'm doing a gig in uh, San Francisco, and and uh, what should I do? What should I talk about? And they said, uh, you know, it's, it's easy. Just just talk about how different America is from Australia. And uh, I said, yeah, that's a good idea. And, uh, not much. <laughs> it's pretty much the same place. Uh, do you guys have bees? <laughs> we have bees as well. So. <laughs> The other thing I could think of is, uh, you know, I was down the street today, and because uh, you know, we have trams as well, and you guys have trams here, and but I went to the street and I said, uh, I said, uh, is this where the tram stops? And uh, this lady said, oh, you mean the streetcar? And I just thought, aren't they all streetcars? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Why. <laughs> um. But uh, do you guys do you guys have uh, emo kids? Yes. 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 We have we have emos in the street. You're nothing. <laughs> As well. And uh, I remember seeing I saw some emo kids and they they, they kind of changed my life because uh, I I saw a big group of them at the train station and uh, I I saw them and I was watching them for a while and then I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna make a difference. <laughs> I'm going to change things. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make the world a better place. And so I walked up to the group of these emo kids, and uh, I just said, "It's not your fault." <laughs> and uh, one of the. I thought, you know, I thought maybe that might make a difference. You know, one of them might start crying and, you know, give me a hug or something. And, uh, you know, I would have made the world a better place. One less emo. But, <laughs> but that didn't happen, you see. Instead, instead, one of the girl ones, uh, I think it was a girl one. Uh, she was kind of pretty in an Edward Scissorhands kind of way. <laughs> one of the girl ones. One of the girl ones just stood up, turned around, and just said to me, Why are you so short? <laughs> and I had no answer to that. Like, like she, I don't know why I'm so short. I don't know why. And she was, just, she was just being honest, telling me the truth, like asking me an honest question. And you know, for ages I've been lying about why I'm so short. I mean, for years I told people I had a hole in my heart, like Webster and Gary Coleman. But that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> When Lord of the Rings came out, I told people I'm a hobbit. <laughs> that was a lie too. You know, for, for a long time, I told people that I'm not really short, I'm just always in the distance. <laughs> so she changed my life. Like she told me, she told me the, the importance of honesty and how, how important it is to just be yourself and be honest. And you know, I've been doing comedy for a long time. And I've been lying. I've been telling stupid jokes and lying, and it's not true. And so from now on, I've decided I've made a change. I'm just going to tell the truth all the time. So I'm just going to tell you honest things and things about my life, and you know things like that. And hopefully, you know, um, we'll both get some therapy. Or even <laughs> uh, so uh, first time I had sex, I tried to put my balls in. <laughs> She was very confused. <laughs> you don't think she was that confused, she probably just like, I hope he doesn't put his driving for his leg in. Uh, would you like to hear the poem I wrote? Yeah.
Yeah? Yes. Okay. This is the poem I wrote. It's, it's what I learned from the emo girl, and so I'll, I'll, I'll dedicate it to her, even though she's not here. She knows. All right. This is a, this is a love poem. Love? What is love? Love is a battlefield. <laughs> no, it's not. Do you feel the battlefield? Do you ever say to yourself, I think I'm in battlefield with Wendy? <laughs> no. <coughs> Pat Benatar is wrong. <laughs> love is a many wondrous thing. Love lifts you up where you belong. All you need is love. Not really. <laughs> love is one thing, a feeling. Love is a forklift? <laughs> love is a mother who lifts a child up to reach the highest apple on the tree of hope. This oh. is me holding a baby. <laughs> love grabs you with its pincers and holds you until you're subdued. And then when you are subdued, it brings its tail around and it stings you. And it stings you and it stings you and it stings you and it stings you and it stings you. What you need is love. Except if you really are dying, then you might need a little bit more than love. <laughs> Perhaps some medicine. <laughs> love doesn't make you money unless you're a prostitute, but even then, prostitutes don't love unless they kiss you on the lips and have sex with you for free. <laughs> what is love? Lady, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Thank you. <laughs>